Now, in terms of any any symptoms, has he has he had any seizures at all that you've noticed? Um, I don't know. I just sometimes think that it is, but I don't know mm -hmm. what I'm looking for. Right. But have you got like a video on your phone, a video uh, setting? Yeah. I mean, what's really helpful is if you can, if you see something unusual and it's still happening, quickly get your phone out and catch it. Because right. if we can actually see what's happening, then we might be able to help with that, decide if it's something that needs treatment or not, and that might help things along. So if you can do that, that would be that would be really good. And, and if he is, yeah. what's that? What's that aside? Well, if he then? if he is having seizures, then that's just telling us about you know the activity of his underlying condition I guess and but that is something that we can treat okay. it's something we can help and I wouldn't like to think that he was having seizures because seizures aren't just about dropping to the ground and shaking and jerking yeah. all over so really anything you notice that's different if you tell us about it or better still get it on a little video clip then you know Trish can have a look and we can talk yeah. about it and see if it's something that we can help right. with I mean, I it's that he's just going to go, you know, in yeah. the middle of the night. I know, I know. I, I mean, think that's unlikely, but, you know, as you know, it's this stuff we know about there. his condition and stuff we don't know. And, you know, we, cannot pre we can't predict how it's going to be. You know, at the minute he's doing all right. I know he's getting more problems with his chest. Yeah, and, yes. you know, we've been talking about, you know, maybe it's getting near a time where his swallow's not so safe and we not, might need to think about different tubes and I know Trish has been out and talked to you about that and, yeah. and I know it's I know all that is really hard but you know we've still got to really focus on what's best for Sam you know no, it's okay crying's allowed it's you know this is really really hard we're not supposed to be in this sort of situation and I know it's it's really hard and it's I mean you're with Sam every day and so sometimes perhaps you don't see the changes in him that we do you know I've put a dot on the, on the graph you know nine months ago when we met and then yes we've seen each other in between but you know his condition has changed significantly and I don't want to keep you know laboring the point but I also need you to be ready that you know we don't know how the future's going to be and we don't know when his time's going to come but we kind of need to begin to get our heads around that a bit for Sam's sake, yeah. Right. What do you mean? Well, he's yeah. strong. He's yeah. right. you know, he's he is strong at the moment, but what I'm saying is, you know, his chest's getting weaker, his feeding and swallowing is weaker. And say he became seriously unwell with a really bad chest infection, then we'd need to think, I think, at the time about what's the right thing to do for Sam. Now, if it was a chest infection with something that we knew we could get him over quickly, if it, was, it wasn't a severe infection, then I think it would be reasonable to you know, give him all the treatment. Yeah. But if he was very, very unwell, and it meant him being attached to a ventilator, um, I'm not sure that that would be the right way to go for Sam, because we know that girls and boys who are very vulnerable, who end up on breathing machines, sometimes can end up with extra complications with doing things as tubes everywhere and that can be really really hard so, so, so what would you not treat him well no i'm not saying not treat him what i'm saying is you know we did his emergency health care plan yeah. and we made the statement before about doing the advanced pediatric life support which means that automatically you would get the same as any other girls or boys what I'm saying at the minute is that I think, in my professional opinion, we should reword that bit, if you're in agreement, to that we would do basic life support until the most senior doctor available, preferably me if I'm around, but it'll be a consultant colleague if not, can talk to you at the time, depending on what the scenario is, because we can't predict everything. It may be just that he's had a seizure, that we can treat that, and we can get him back to how he is, which would be fab. But we, it's difficult sometimes to predict how things are going to be and how serious the things are going to be at the time. And, you know, it keeps coming back to what is in Sam's best interest. And I know that's really hard for you guys because you're going through you know, real torture watching him and coping with all of this. But, you know, we've really got to put Sam first and think about him having the best possible quality of remaining life. And I don't know how long that life is going to be. And I know it's hard for you to have to cope with uncertainty. It'd be a lot easier if I said it was going to be X number of days or months or time. And I'm sorry I can't do that. 
Um, but we need to hang on in there and be strong for him and make the best decisions at every step that we can. I can't think about this. Yeah, I, I know, I know. It's all right, we'll, we'll talk, you know. We'll yeah, you need some private time. You know, I'm throwing a lot of stuff into the ring here to think about and putting a lot on you. But you These are not like, like with old people where you mm -hmm. have a mm -hmm. non-resuscitation. Mm -hmm. That's not where we're up to, I don't think, at the minute. But what I'm saying is we'll think carefully at the time, depending on what the situation is, and you will be involved in the decision. You won't have to make the decision on your own. But it would be wrong for us to make decisions about your son, who you know the best and love, without you being involved yeah, in the decision-making. You can get over making. a chest infection. Yeah. You know, Sometimes, you can give him yeah. No. But he's vulnerable now, and he's weak. And I know... You want us to but mend him, and I wish. He, you know, you know, yeah, I know. There. And it may be that we him. can get him over the chest infection, but we might not be able to. Yeah. Thanks, Doctor. So, how about I redraft a plan, and Trish will come out and talk to you again about it at home, just to make sure that that you're okay with the words that we're using, yeah. and 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 where we're up to. And Trish will signpost you again to you know, some other sources of support for yourselves because you know I'm asking you to be strong, but that's a big ask, and it's okay for yourselves You've to seen be you needing Trish. support. I know, and like Dr. Howard said, he, he you, like you said, he's doing well, but he is deteriorating. You know that, um, but I think what Dr. Howard is saying is we still will treat him if he gets a chest infection. She's not saying we won't. Mm. It's just that it might come a time where he's so poorly that the antibiotics in themselves wouldn't do the trick and it would be that he would have to go on to a ventilator and that's making that decision mm. would that be fair on him or not it's quality if he, light, yes it? mm -hmm. it's you know quality, yeah. light, to put him on yeah. a ventilator that he might he not come yeah. up he go out yeah. anywhere or just yeah. lie and attached to those tubes yeah. and the machine breathing for him mm -hmm. but what she's not saying is that we wouldn't treat him and we'll always be there and we will always manage his symptoms but he has a right to his dignity and you know none of us would want to die with you know people leaping around all over and sticking needles in us all the time and I think you know we need to be mindful of that and just as I say keep coming back to his best interests and yeah. what's right for him yeah and I know that's what you want it's really hard. You've got mm -hmm. to. I think that's why you have to go and think about what you've just been told. Again. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah. 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 Okay. So Trish will catch up with you at home and talk to you again about the feeding and bring the yeah. plan again to talk about again. Trish. And we'll meet again soon in the clinic. And you know you can ring us any time yeah. if there's anything that you want to ask or that you're worried about. Okay. Okay. okay.